what's up everyone how's it going there mm -hmm. all right we're in uh 2007 8 around then yeah right graffiti still yeah still continue on writing graffiti at this point i have the whole city the manhattan island where it's just maintenance work i put in all the grunt work already and uh the beef with scuff and bet is over like i explained um squashed it and that was the end of that <clears throat> and they pretty much faded away mm -hmm. that stopped right and then scuff I, I don't know if he stopped right or not maybe he was right now in brooklyn but stopped fucking with me <clears throat> and me and re continued writing and it was pretty much uneventful at that point the village the east village started getting a lot of graffiti popping up um like newer guys started kicking in. You also had some newer guys up in the Bronx that started putting a little work too. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just stayed steady with Ari. Boom, 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 boom. Still just smashing shit. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we would just ride around, put the radio on 1010 Winds. It's a news station. And it's, um, <clears throat> you know, the music and all that. Gives you the news every like three minutes, four minutes. It says every five minutes with commercials and shit like that. But it's almost like having your own um, police scanner, <laughs> at least as far as it goes with serious shit popping off, you know. And we've always done that, because <clears throat> especially if you're riding around Manhattan, it's really like telling you shit that's going on in Manhattan, right then and there, where there's traffic jams, you know, late at night if there's a shooting or some kind of police activity going on over here or over there so we would just have it on 10 10 wins <clears throat> ride around right the graffiti like always <clears throat> listening to 10 10 wins on the radio and this went on and on and on and somewhere along the line I started getting a little too comfortable <clears throat> i would probably around that period also somewhere in there i wrote what cost cost um Pop that guy I got back in touch with cost and I went out with him I think once or twice maybe we went out we got up pretty good yeah cost came out he was active on the scene yeah he started taking shit down again like in the corners of all the gates with skin cap the CEOs yeah <clears throat> he came out pretty heavy with that shit I went with him once or twice or something like that then even he faded out <clears throat> well once again maybe just didn't fuck with Manhattan or the Bronx, I don't know. Maybe he kept going somewhere else, Queens or Brooklyn or something, Staten Island or something. But <clears throat> I stopped seeing it. It's, uh, now, yeah, so me and Ari, pretty much I have been nothing going on, just writing and writing and writing still, just like normal. Uh, the amount of paint was less at that point. We weren't necessarily each dumping out seven cans at that point. It was kind of hard to. <clears throat> uh, we had all the spots. I mean, we could do them again, get them better, or something like that. And like I said, scuff and bet stop. So all the spots they got that we really gave a shit about, we kind of re-got. And we just kept going and going. And then I remember we got a little too comfortable somewhere along the West Side Highway. I'd say below 54th Street, but above the Jacob Javits Center. All of them. I think the furthest lane to the river is going downtown and it's a divider and then the uptown side it's about six lanes or something like that <clears throat> I'm no highway specialist I just know but um, we had the car parked on one of them side streets over there and we went out in the highway to catch some tags and a uh, cop car not an actual blue and white cop car but an undercover cop car and it was very little traffic, <clears throat> if any at all. It was like 3 in the fucking morning. 4 in the morning almost. And probably on a Sunday morning or something like that. Like no traffic. Maybe just people coming from clubs that are drunk and shit like that. A couple of truck drivers or some shit like that. <clears throat> I don't even know if that highway allows trucks. I'm just shooting off the top of my head here. What would possibly be out there? <clears throat> uh, like bridge and tunnel people coming from clubs or something like that, you know. But yeah, it was just, like, real slow. It wasn't that much on that side, but the uptown side was pretty busy. So that downtown side, some cop, actually, it was in, like, 
on my car. He's going by. <laughs> he stops. Starts going in reverse and shit. I'm like, fuck, man. We gotta get to the other side. <clears throat> As we're trying to run across, spins out uh, like that. The door opens. The guy hops out. He's fucking cop. He's actually in the fucking uniform too. He's just fucking coming at us. Fucking, and I'm looking at him like, yo, I could tell this dude, he's kind of into athlete. He's a, like in good athletic shape. It looks like he runs. I mean, he's got perfect form. I run, I know. I'm looking at it. I was on a track team, you know, <clears throat> and when I was in high school. I'm looking at this guy. He's like, perfect form, you know. <clears throat> I'm like, yeah, man, shit. Got to fuck that. So we run across, and as we're getting to the cross, the uptown side, the traffic is so hard, I'm like trying to catch in between, like, look when I got to leap, and I just saw a little bit of a space, and I just went for it, and I was like, ah, 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 ah. but I made it, and fucking R.E. was right behind me, he made that shit too, it was really just a little gap, man, but I went with it, it was actually running like, not straight like this, but kind of like uptown, like to an angle and shit, like, it was ah, ah, ah. We got across, I remember like looking at this fucking cop and like going, like what the fuck dude, like you're bugging, you know, and it was like he fucking just flipped right over that divider, like how someone would hop over a fucking subway turnstile. I'm like, yo, this is like the worst kind of cop you'd want after you, man. And it was kind of like, yo, I swear, it was like a humdrum night. Like, what's it now? Listen to 10 10 wins. You know, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, <laughs> like, yo, we just fucking kept running down the fucking highway, man. And this dude was not letting up. Finally, we got off it, hopped over another divider. He got off it, and I'm like, yo, you gotta get to your car. His car was on the next block. He's like, yo, I don't want to blow up my car. I'm like, dude, we're going to get arrested, man. This fucking dude is putting this shit in. Like, I looked him dead in the eye when I was like, yo, the fuck? And he was like, he flipped right over that shit. He was running. I was walking, talking like, yo, this shit is popping off. This neighborhood is getting crazy, yo. We got to get in your car. If we could get to your car before they could get to that corner, we could get in your car and lay the fuck down and just stay. We won't have to move it. They won't know where the fuck we went. Because there's like big fucking blocks, like with clubs, or like a factory or something. It's like fucking over there in there where you have the, um, it's funny, I used to write on them things too. I didn't even mention that in my podcast. But the horse and carriages that uh, ride around Central Park, they used to keep them over there on 62nd, 63rd Street. But at this point in life, they don't keep them there no more. Ever since they built that big building, <clears throat> I used to write on them over there. Yeah, I used to write on the canopy part. The part that they flip over if it's raining out. It's like a canvasy leather. Yeah, do RD tags on the back of it. <clears throat> yeah, I used to kill them fucking things. I was king of the horse carriage. But anyway, yeah, over now on the west side around there, because I remember that's like one of the blocks that we were running by. It was the horse and carriages out in the street there. There was no horses to them. It was a stable there. They keep them in like a big factory building now. They turned into a stable and shit. But <clears throat> yeah. Fucking cab company, too. There's cabs and shit like that over there. But other than that, it's just like a long fucking run on just a brick wall size. It's just nowhere to fucking go. Nowhere. Like, yeah, like there's no gates. It's like, it's just long brick fucking walls with like maybe an entrance in the middle to get into the building or something like that. A little time clock or something for someone to punch in. Other than that, there's fucking nothing, man. Nothing. It's just solid brick. It's like maze just maze the streets. So, <clears throat> as we're running, I'm trying to explain to RE that <clears throat> we are going to get arrested. The call went out. These dudes are pissed. Plus, when he smashed back on the highway, the actual officer that stayed in the cop car, because it was two of them, when he pulled in, I actually heard him smash and looked. That's when I went like this to the cop. I actually saw his partner smash his vehicle. Like backing up to pull out and go somewhere, he went, you know, and he actually wrecked his vehicle, the police car that's unmarked. It's got wrecked. I heard it. I don't know the damage. I'm not a mechanic, but I heard it looked in its direction. I looked at the fucking cop. He's four lanes away from me. I went, like, dude, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, chill. Like, you're going to get paid, yo. Don't worry about it. Like, but nah, man. This dude, he was just, I don't know. He, Really, really on it like that, man. And I assumed after that car crashed, 
you know, it made a little noise over there, the cop car. After that thing got smashed up too, I'm assuming, yeah, man. They could tack that shit on our bill, you know what I mean? Like, that's our fault, you know? So yeah, we really had to get the fuck out of there, you know? And I told them, we gotta get off this street, there's no other way. There's no way we're gonna make it to that fucking corner. And it's like, it's not gonna happen. We have to get into your car. If we, I said, okay, and I'm doing this as we're running, like, I'm actually, I'm fast. And that's another thing I realized that day, I'm not as fast as I used to be. As I remember running on that fucking highway, I didn't have much space because the traffic is going uptown. I'm running against traffic. But I'm running, I'm like, run, motherfucker. You know, in my mind, I'm like, come on, run, motherfucker. Thinking, I'm like, I'm thinking I am, and I'm like, yeah, but this ain't running, kick it up, man. Put that shit in gear, motherfucker. And that was like the best I had. At this point, I was probably 41, 42. And yeah, I was slower than I was a couple of years before that. At that point, I would say, I realized that I'm getting old. Yeah, right then and there. And that was early 40s. Yeah. I would get, I remember that. I remember telling myself that. Man. But anyway, we get to the car. And uh, I was running. I'm like, yo, get your keys in your book. Go ahead. We run, we get, boom, in the car, right? And we get in the car. Like, Lay down in the car. We're looking up the mirror. We didn't even hit the corner yet. So I was like, fuck it, pull out and go. So we pulled out. And we got to like, what was it, like 11th, 12th Avenue or something. And boom, cops were pulling right down, going all over the place. They didn't think of us at all. So yeah, we got to the corner. I'm thinking what happened is him and his partner met up on that part. And it took them a couple of seconds. Where if he would have just kept coming and coming, he would have been right there. He would have been there. I know he didn't run out of gas, man. He was probably younger than me and Artie. That cop, man. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was not fucking around. And then I remember telling Artie, man, this shit can never fucking happen again, man. And he's like, yo, you were looking out, Rob. <laughs> he's right. But I, 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 there's nothing you can do about that. You know, the cars are going at a normal flow. And then all of a sudden, something slams on its brakes and starts coming at us in reverse. You know, it's not my call, but... So I realized, I'm like, yeah, that was some shit, you know? <laughs> then, like, a week or two after that, some other shit popped off. But that wasn't with R.E. That was in the tunnels with Lace. And again, we're running for our life, cutting all over the place and shit like that. Yeah, I had a couple of wild situations in the tunnels. Man. Once with fucking PK, man, we were doing that abandoned station on the 6th line there. It's still there, too. Um, it was just me and PK this time. And it was like, there just happened to be a fucking fire or something. One of the buildings was like, all these firemen start jumping in at 14th Street, a bunch of them start jumping in at 23rd Street. So, like, we're pretty much done and shit. And I wasn't even doing that. I was just hanging out with PK and shit, man. I might should have been done, like, a week or two before that, you know? I'm just chilling with a PK and shit, you know. Well, I look up the tunnel and I'm like, doing. We got people coming. And we got workers. That's why I said workers. She said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Workers, man. Motherfucking little flashlights are coming this way, you know." She said, "All right, so you know, you go the other way." But I said, "We can't keep going to 14th Street now. <clears throat> we can't go popping out there. You know, we're gonna have to go over a couple of layers of hide for a little while or something like that." And when I look at 14th Street, <laughs> I see the motherfuckers coming that way too. So I'm like, "Fuck." What we gonna do, man? I'm, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this shit, they, they, they're coming from both ways. <clears throat> About 2008, maybe, 2009 or something like that. Coming from both ways. So I said, fuck it, man, there's no way. Like, we could hide in there and be in there forever and shit like that. And just wait them out. But, like, fuck it. <clears throat> Jump down. So we run. Right back, like, right across all the tracks. They're coming like this. So we go that way, you know, and we get to the other side where it's the uptown track. And I look every single fucking tube. There's these people coming, right? So then we hide behind like a little box in a wall. I'm peeking. And it's like both sides are starting to get like this, like closer and closer to us, right? So I'm like the next group of tracks, the guy's about half a block away. But this roller in here, the guy's like three quarters of a block near us you get me so i'm like fuck but they got close enough to us where i could realize it's firemen like i see them with fire helmets and they got the fucking things on and they got the yellow and that was kind of like yeah i haven't seen a train for a while man so these were actually firemen with floodlights walking around I was like fuck 
So eventually we just got to one wall while the guys behind the wall passed that way. Then we went into that aisle while they were th going that way. Like their backs were turned to us. If they would have just turned around and see us. And then the other group passed the other way. And shit, yeah, shit was crazy. But then eventually there was another group coming. We ran right through 14th Street. Man. We popped right up. It was actually like we were coming through the backs of 14th Street heading uptown. In the middle track, middle island there. We were coming through like all these caverns and shit. It was like there was actually like workers there with their feet up. Like on the desk and like lockers with like pin up like penthouse like centerfold pictures like tape on the inside of lockers and shit it was like dudes I swear there was like a table there like a fucking like a table there was like coffee and shit it was, it was like a break room <clears throat> we ran right past the <laughs> it was actually just like another dude coming the other way and we were just like yo we're like we're moving about the way and shit yo we popped right out on 14th street man and then as we're coming up the stairs a bunch of cops are coming down the other group of stairs on the other platform running down the stairs and shit. I was like, oh, shit. And there's actually a police precinct in 14th Street, mm -hmm. train station, Union Square. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see you motherfucker try that. Pop right out. Boom! Right out. 14th Street, Union Square. Yo, PK Note, man. Shout out for that one, man. Yeah. We were shitting the pill, man. I was like, damn. I forget what we did. I think we were like, fuck that shit. We went over to the end of the yard and got back on the train or something like that. He went to Queens and I went home or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, good times, man. Crazy PK, man. Me and him have had some missions, man. Some reason, <laughs> whatever he gets involved in, it's just freak accidents and shit, man. But yeah, so anyway, me and Ari, and yeah, actually that PK thing was around that same period of time. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks before or after or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, around the same period of time. I also did the Queensbridge pit. I had already done it with this dude Soul, it's my boy Alex Soul. I did it with him, Queensbridge Pit, real big. I always just take the front wall. I've been taking that front wall since 1994, 95. In the 80s I had it too. I was fucking around in Astoria layup. I did a big filling in, on that tra in, um, the pit there, about 87, 88. Top to bottom, but not real big. Like, but yeah, that was like 87, 88. I got pictures of it somewhere. I forget what I was with. I mean, I've been hopping in and out of there with a lot of dudes, man. Dudes from this neighborhood I'm in right now, man. People I grew up with, and shit. We can jump in and out of there. They used to park trains in there, too. Here in that pit. You go to the other side, <clears throat> you jump in, and run down. You go behind the wall. Yeah. They used to put trains in there. Yeah, so I did the pit. These are blockbusters I'm talking about. I did the pit real big. I'll put that on. Um, I, I did it a bunch of times. That's the first time I re reinforced it after like 94 or something like that. And then I redid it. Yeah, like 2007, 2008, I did it with Soul. And like 2011, 2012, I did it with Pove. Then I went back down there by myself and did it. And then the last time I did it before my arrest was with Anna. A N N A. I, yeah. I always had that pit, man. I had to keep that shit on a lot. Yeah. Queensbridge pit. Right for the 59th Street Bridge lights out. That 21st Street, Long Island City, Queens, Queensboro Plaza. Always had that pit. Always got that wall problem. Yeah. What else was I doing then? Yeah, so it pretty much became pretty, like, blah, blah. Uh, somewhere along this time, I might be a little earlier or, or later in this date, but somewhere around this time, like the Lower East Side and like the Village, he had a bunch of people who started putting in work down there. I don't even like know who came when, what and where, but I, it started getting pretty heavy down there. He had some dude like Kuma, uh, uh, what do you have, this other guy, I remember D3 had problems with, Katsu, K-A-T-S-U, uh, Attic. Uh, the Pear Hound, I think they came later, Pear Hound and them, I like that shit, Pear Hound, Goog, uh, ZA1, no, ZA1, he came out in like 2012, well, at least when I started noticing them with uh, Easy and them, yeah, Easy and them, 2012, they came back out. See, the reason I remember 2012, because that's when D3 jumped back on the scene about 2010, 2011, 
D3 quit smoking cigarettes. So for him to quit smoking cigarettes, he'd run around with these pan cans of paint. And he, <laughs> you know, that motherfucker, he knows how to write, but he took Manhattan down real quick. Man. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, uh, shit, he was tearing Brooklyn up. He was fucking everything up, man. He still got tagged on Brooklyn. and still tags around trucks. I went with him on a couple of missions, like in Manhattan and shit. And yeah, we tore shit up a few times. So probably, I remember 2012. I think that's also around the time I started hitting the city bikes. Those blue city bikes started coming out on the scene where you could rent these blue bicycles. And um, the first year they came out, they claimed to have 6,000 of them on um, the lot. In the five in Manhattan, I believe, is the first borough. In Manhattan, they had 6,000 of them. And the first week they came out, I said, well, let me see what's up with these things. So I actually ordered some Marsh Ink in the mail. Marsh Ink's what I used to use on the subways. Later on, <clears throat> yeah, Marsh I'd use. Flowmaster. Well, Flowmaster was dead. I really wasn't around for the era of Flowmaster at all. I, I mean, I have a couple cans here and there that have passed through my hands and shit. But, yeah, I wasn't really around. Like, because of Barry. His father used to own um, an art supply store down there. 54th Street, yeah. Barry Bear. But yeah, this was the marshing. I got it and I started writing on that city box on that part that goes down. I just wanted to see what they were made of. So I figured they got 6,000 of them. I know exactly. I have it written down. I caught 2,000 of them exactly. So I caught one third of them. Yeah, you were seeing my shit for a hot minute. And I'd say I did it all in one summer and then it was easy. I dove from my house. At that point, I was living on 62nd Street. I'd go down <laughs> under the 59th Street Bridge. They had a, a row of 40 of them. <clears throat> I'd catch that 40, and then I'd go down 54th, 2nd Avenue, catch another 40 of them. Then on the next blocks, another 40. John Jay College, I'd go around there on the west side. I'd catch 80. 40 this way, 40 that way, 40 going down there. St. Luke Roosevelt, oh, I'm smashing, man. Yo, I, and, and, yeah, so in the summer, I had a, I got them. Before, like, fucking Halloween, I had 2,000 and fucking city bike things painted. Yeah, did RD tags on about 2,000. Not about, like, over 2,000. Because I, I didn't want to undercount, so I overcounted. Yeah, I got 2,000 and fucking things, man, straight up. And they were running, man. People were like, yo, this, that. They were actually circulating on the internet and shit like that. I mean, of course, I'm keeping quiet about it because it's a crime I just committed. I just wanted to see what city bike link had. I bet you didn't think about graffiti, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I came with them hard with that shit. <clears throat> and then, uh, after that, the summer was over, and it, Halloween came around, and then it got cold, and it was a bad winter. And they didn't really pull many, they pulled them all out. They only had a few of them there. It was a new program, just getting started. Well, you know, by the time the summer came around again, none of the RDs were left. Because every single bike, like, first off, the winter came, so they pulled a bunch of them out of circulation. They tuned them up, fixed them, or whatever. And as they were doing it, they got rid of the graffiti and shit. But I kept doing it until I noticed them cleaning it. Like, they actually pulled out, like, a rag. Almost like a, a fucking, um, shit, I just had them, too. Like a handy white rag. You know, like, out of, like, a Lysol thing. You pull it, I'll show you. Wait one second. I'm sorry, people. <clears throat> Continued on with fire hydrants. Um, kept writing on fire hydrants. At this point, like I said, uh, Scuff and Bet, they faded out. And even that website, I'd say around this point in time, I don't know if it stopped working or if I just stopped going on. Like, it just kind of became a thing in the past, I think, at that point. Or maybe like something else picked up, like MySpace or Facebook or Instagram, something like that, you know? So. 
And yeah, the, that Streets of Saiyan thing's kind of faded out of graffiti history or whatever. Honestly, I uh, can't say I was sad to see it go. <laughs> but yeah, they kept putting my name on up until that point. Then after that, boom, squash beef, Streets of Saiyan things, the website, whatever happened when it happened to me, I just kind of lost interest in it. <clears throat> and um, me and Ari continued writing graffiti. I continued to write on fire hydrants by myself. I would dress up like a construction worker and <clears throat> walk around with a safety belt on with a big monkey wrench and, <clears throat> and walk up to them and have a helmet. And it's funny because it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, it's ST. And, if you're <laughs> and um, I'd walk up to these hydrants and paint them. <clears throat> RD tag. Go right about my business. I was doing them, I did it that way. I was doing them in a wheelchair. I got a wheelchair here. <clears throat> I was doing them in a wheelchair with an army coat, acting like a vet that's begging for money. I still got the wheelchair here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I was catching hydrants every way I could, daytime, nighttime, whatever. I had daytime schemes, like I said, the army coat, or like I'm supposed to be doing it. Like I'd walk up to them, dress like a construction worker, right? Act like I'm tightening it. I'd do an RD on each side. And I eventually ran out of those 11 cases of that rebar paint, and then I started buying this stuff. <clears throat> and I say buying because I was purchasing it. What I would do is I would sell my artwork on eBay, and the money I'd get to sell my artwork, I'd buy this stuff and write a fire hydrant. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I was doing nothing wrong. Uh, buying my spray paint with money I purchased off of items I sold that were graffiti type shit, like street signs I do the graffiti on them and stuff like that. And yeah, <laughs> it's around the time I started selling my shit on eBay. Now, <clears throat> I used to put it on for 99 cents and this and that. And originally it started as a joke. <clears throat> my brother and a couple of his friends are hanging out. And, oh, you should sell it. Should I see people sell? So I, they showed me this eBay thing, and I looked at it and. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm looking at people that are like, nobodies and shit. Yeah, yeah, grab graffiti legends. I'm like, legend, man. He started like three years ago, motherfucker. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, yo, over here, yo, I'm a legend. So it was almost like a mockery because this whole street art thing, street art this, street art that. So I'm like, I'll show them street art. So I would steal street signs from the streets. I'd paint on the fucking thing. And I'd sell them. Street art, you got it? Something I stole from the street, it's graffiti that I used to paint in the streets, currently was still painting in the streets, painted on the street sign, so street art. <laughs> and it started, you know, sounding pretty good, enough for me to buy my spray paint and shit like that. And yes, at that point I was doing absolutely nothing wrong. <clears throat> I mean, other than grab a couple street signs or something like that, but even then, yeah, I don't want to get into all that. <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, so we yeah, had Ari, me, him, this, that, hanging out, and we could probably push it up to, alright, 2012, 2011, 2012, Easy starts popping up, that's when I start seeing Easy, Easy comes out with these guys, uh, well, send for Easy, uh, dude, that they fibs, Trap, and them, now you see Trap, I like him, man, he's a good writer, Trap's been around, he's stayed steady, and even when they fade out, he keeps in there, uh, Trap. IF, iconic figure, trap. Yeah, he's, I like his shit a lot. <clears throat> he's a good writer, I like his shit, trap. He's been around too. I mean, I grew up on Trap OTB. I know Trap OTB. I, it's the only trap I heard of back then. But towards the late 80s, I'd say on the Central Park layup, is probably I looked and I saw those T's. They were a little different shape and stuff, but they were on them trains around that, sitting there watching the guy. But, <clears throat> yeah, I would say the first time I saw that trap up was in the 80s, <clears throat> late 80s on the subways. And it kind of never stopped, really. <clears throat> Actually, it slowed down. I think once all the trains were gone, I don't know if they hopped right on the highways or not, but somewhere along the line, but there's gaps, there's gaps in there, there's a few gaps in there, but he came back out, he's probably out there writing somewhere right now as we speak, Trap, man, it's an interesting guy, man, believe me, he's up there, man, he's up there with some of the dudes that's done it the longest illegally, you know. yeah. 
Alright, um, so yeah, trap, easy, blah, 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 blah. Um, let me see, what else can I say? I don't know, Pear and Hound, maybe they started popping up around then. Yeah, maybe, I'm not sure, but I like those guys. And once them guys came out, <clears throat> it was kind of like a raft with me with Manhattan Island. Like by the time Pear and Hound and came out. <clears throat> I mean, I had all the fire. You know what I think my problem was? I concentrated too much on the fire hydrants because all the shit that Sun 4 was talking, you know? I mean, yeah, I got the fire hydrants, and yeah, that shit would last, and it would beat the buff. But if I wasted that time to smash and gates and smash and gates and smash and gates, I wish I was with RE, but... <clears throat> You know, a little bit later, me and RE, yeah, we'll get into that maybe in the next podcast or something, but we kind of go our own way. Me and Ari at one point, <clears throat> uh, it's coming, you know, and um, we kind of go, like, psh, you know, <clears throat> and um, all right, so yeah, right, and I did that, I did this, uh, lace, graffiti, yeah, that's about it, man. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm committing no like real crimes or nothing like that, just still writing graffiti, writing a lot of graffiti. <clears throat> a lot of, um, yeah, the city bikes picked up that, just for two, three months I did the city bikes. Whenever they put them on the market, I think it was like July 4th, <clears throat> until like October something, I caught 2,000 and fucked the fish. Every night I was catching, like it was easy to pack 100 here and 50 there, 80 here, you know, like that, yeah, it was easy to catch them, you know. shit, fuck yeah. yeah. I just wanted to see what they were made of, and yeah, they got rid of that graffiti quick. It's like they pulled them in in the winter, and they buffed them as they fixed them and you know, stored them. You know, and then I saw my own eyes with something similar to this. They wiped the fucking graffiti right off it. Like it wasn't ever even there. <clears throat> Did it with my own two eyes. It looked like I used a water base marker or something. You know? <laughs> God, I was like, oh shit. And that was Marshink. So Marshink that was around that year. You could buy it. I think, I think I paid like 30 bucks for it. I remember getting them fucking things for like 17 bucks, man. Fucking uh, Marshinks. Yeah. See the Garvey, the supermarket. Inc. I never bought that. I actually never knew where to purchase that. I only stole the Garvey Inc. You know the purple supermarket Inc. I only stole that shit because I actually never knew where to buy it. I think it was like some industrial shit, and I was young. But I would always steal it from Flag Foods, Sloan's. Sloan's had a good place near to get it. Have it over there near the kitty litter. You know, about two, three bottles of that shit, and stick it in the coat down my pants or whatever, depending on if it's winter or if it's summer or what. Um, flag food, I'd steal the supermarket ink from, they'd keep it behind the cigarette machine. Flag food, right on my corner it used to be actually, that flag food's been gone 30, 40 years now. Yeah, it's going back to like 84, 1984, 85, supermarket ink. I remember Nash, oh wait. He had these big gallons of this weird stuff that we would use also that was similar to supermarketing. I don't know where the fuck, man, stole that shit. <clears throat> I didn't steal a lot of shit with him. Uh, it's like, uh, it was real carbony. It looked almost like the carbon ink that people would make when they get the sheets of carbon paper. You remember the carbon paper? You put it under a page and then you write and it duplicates what you wrote on the next page. You take that shit and mix it with like rubbing alcohol or benzene or some shit like that. Turns into ink. I mean, you take the pages out, shake it, got ink. But he was actually getting the shit where it said ink. I think it was cash register ink or something. Shit was great on the insides, but if you did a tag on the mailbox, it was like the rain would get rid of it, but it don't rain on the insides of the subways, you know. It was real flat and chalky. And that shit was good, man. We, I used to use that shit, man. Up in the D yard, hell yeah, I'd be in there. I'd fuck a whole gallon of that shit. I didn't give a fuck. They buffed them fucking things so fast anyway, man. The DR, fuck yeah, I would tear them fucking things up back in the days. That was like the mid, late 80s, yeah, 87, 88, maybe, maybe. Nah, 86. Yeah, I didn't really fuck around after a while. Uh, until the fish film. I just started doing whole cars like the last, like, 88. I was just doing whole cars pretty much. I didn't bother really. No, yeah, it was more like 89 actually. So 88, yeah, 86, I think, was probably the last year I went to the D yard. Probably 1986. The D yard uptown, uh, 205. Uh, last time I went to the Dewey D yard was in 2012. Yeah. 
2012, Sandy or something like that. 2011, something like that. I was in there with Axe, A X S T M, Mikey Axe. Yeah, you know, the 2011, maybe 2012. That shit was lasting. Some asshole fucking went over that shit. Man. I see that. Like I ain't think no one sneak in there, right on that shit in the fucking yard, you know, on the way to Coney Island. Some asshole went in there, and it's like some new guy. He says Europe, or Europe. So E R U P. Someone sent me a picture of the show, but that one is dick, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, people. Hey, hey. All right. <clears throat> you know, like normally, I um, watch my video and add a little commentary afterwards. All right. Um, all right. That's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on um, a video. I, and maybe some photographs of the, now I'll save the photos and shit for another episode of the Dewey. So the first thing, well, I guess you could call it the Dewey, the big yard, little yard, this, that. Tech, fucking Coney Island, the yard. I went in there in 2012, and I was in there with this dude, Mike Axe, A-X, S-T-M crew. He's from out there. And he, um does those A fill-ins. He used to get a lot of the ding-dongs, a lot of letter lines, a lot of highway shit like that. Hey, get out of here, puppy. So, that'll be the first thing. Then I'm going to put on a bunch of my street signs and stuff that I was putting on eBay and selling and stuff like that. Making money off it. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep it there. Originally, I'd like to start getting into my whole art career and uh, art because, I don't know, as far as it goes with graffiti, it's kind of like, but, um, yeah, all right, people. Keep your eyes out. Also, the pit, the pit that I did. Queensbridge pit. Yeah, I did that a bunch of times. I, like, straight on from 1994 until just a couple months ago, I had that shit smashed. Like, straight on through the front wall, huge blockbuster. First time I did it the last seven, eight years. Uh, Originally, I did it in like 87, 1988. I was trying to pull off a top to bottom in the Astoria layup. Uh, it's outdoors. And I tried to pull off one right there in the station. And it didn't work out so well. <clears throat> I got chased by the police. <clears throat> so I winded up going down to where the pit is. And that's the first time I ever did the pit black and silver. That's not as big as the other ones I've done later on in life, of course, but yeah, that was the first time, like 87, 88. I mean, I've been hopping in and out of there since I was 12, 13 years old, man. I remember Don One used to have a lot of shit, man, a lot of people. Actually, in his book, the Don One book that KR did, uh, they have some pictures from the pit in there. Yeah, I remember a lot of people used to get there. Days. Well, he was from Roosevelt Island, so that's not too strange. It was Zephyr down there. Shit. This is early, early on, but yeah. <clears throat> So, yeah, so I uh, will put footage of that on, too. Like I said, I originally did it there by myself. That one time I kind of got chased or raided, I guess you could call, from the story layup. So I wind up going there and doing that. Then later on, like, 94, I did it. And then it lasted uh, six years, seven years. I did it again. I, when I did it in 94, I don't even remember who the fuck I was with. Pove, MPC? No. No. I did it by myself. Actually, I did it... No. Yeah, first time I did... In 94, I was by myself. In 99, I was by myself. Then in 2005, 2006, or something like that, I did it with Soul. And then in like 2011, 2012, I did it with Pove. Then I went back down and did it again. They crossed out the Pove. Originally, they crossed out the Soul, and then Pove and me went back down there. Pove MPC, Pove GU, Tommy. Yeah, I just saw he was in the newspaper <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, months ago, rather. But yeah, <clears throat> uh, we went in there and did it. And he went over the Soul because the Soul was already fucked with. <clears throat> then Pove shit got fucked with, and I went down and I just did the RD spot again not even like it was crossed out or nothing but it could use a new paint job so I ran down there and did it silver again with the code red background whatever the fuck that red is scarlet red or whatever I think I used code red from Crylon 
I mean, um, Rusto, the shit you get in the Home Depot. Poppy red, that's it, poppy red. Code red is that Montana shit. Yeah. Either way, code red, poppy red. I use them different times, but it's always had a red background. And No, once it had a light, light blue background. One of them times I did it. And then, uh, what did I say, 2012, Pove? Yeah, 2012, Pove. Then me and Lace was going to do it. Lace was like, oh, I don't understand, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know, he didn't like how the wall turns or some shit like that. Um, then I did it again by myself. That was, that's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I did it about eight, nine times I fucking placed and I, like the tenth time I did it or something close to ten. I don't know. I could really sit down and figure it out. I'm just hopping here in front of the camera talking. I could look at it and really honestly come up with the exact amount of times because I took pictures of every time I did it. And um, except for 1987-88. Actually, I do have pictures of that, but I didn't personally take them. <clears throat> I forget where they came from. Someone in Queens. Maybe Dos, D-O-S, might have got them for me or something like that. I don't remember. Uh, Jice or someone like that, a rib. Alright, and then like 2000, yeah, a couple months before my arrest, I did it with Anna. <clears throat> we hopped down there and did it. This girl Anna, I tell you, she puts a lot of these writers to shame, man. A lot of these male writers out there, all that testosterone bullshit. That girl come in, man, she shut shit the fuck down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, keep your eyes open. The first thing you'll see is the Dewey with the video and the photos, nah. I mean, me and Mikey, we took a lot of pictures of us in the Dewey yard, but I'm not going to put that shot. One day I could do an episode of the Dewey. I'll do an episode of the fucking thing. But right now we're just going right through it. So you're going to be looking at the first thing would be the Dewey with the fluorescent orange. I know orange fades out, especially that fluorescent orange shit for road paint. It's not meant to last forever. I knew all that. I just figured it would make it pop, which it did. I did a real quick, real shitty looking, but it was there. It was in the Dewey. A little nerve wracking, a lot of activity in the Dewey Yard, a lot of workers in the Dewey Yard had to hide a few times in the Dewey Yard in 2012. There was a lot of shit going on there that day, but we, I pulled it off. Mikey Axe did what he did, and he got, we got out of there. So I'll put the video footage of that on, and just look for the fluorescent orange background. Then when you see a big, big black, and, I mean silver with a black outline and a red, whether it's cold red, poppy red, or fucking whatever, red, red, that is the pit in Queensbridge pit. Yeah, Queensbridge. The bridge is over. The bridge is over. You know the shit I'm talking about. Queensbridge. Right there, 59th Street Bridge, now known as the Ed Koch Bridge. Queensboro Bridge or some shit. Boom. 